Hello again, everybody. It is the coach. You're tuned in to Madden 19 on EA Sports. We're just about set to get started, and this ought to be a good one between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New Orleans Saints. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. And coach, we are down on the bayou as you get a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome here in New Orleans. This is what it looked like just a moment ago in the heart of New Orleans. Folks, there's no place for this noise to go in the Superdome. It is loud, and these fans are ready for football as their Saints get ready to do battle with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Saints team as they interplay. They've been in a great groove. Winners of seven of their last ten on the year. And they looked awfully good last week and came away with a two-touchdown victory. They did have a few reasons for concern defensively, but all in all, they'll take a repeat here if they could get it. Meanwhile, for the visiting Steelers, it's been perfection so far. They come in here unbeaten. the play fake he'll look to throw sliding out of the pocket and he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds a gain of 11 to kick off the drive and it's a quick first down look like the defense put pretty good pressure on him but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people on the run had to get on his horse still Five, accurately nine. throws a nice pass Five, for a first down nine. here's a play fake as they set up to throw being chased out left. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Back to back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll look to throw now on first down. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing go. offense nowadays. Looking to throw. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Cameron Jordan in there to sack him, and that is 10 for him now on the year. So a look here at the key inactives, and we got this list before the game down on the field. And they tell us the same thing every time, don't they? Next man up. No excuses. Be ready to play. That's the mantra of every organization. The key is having guys on the roster who are capable of filling in and playing at a high level. That's when you know you've drafted well, scouted free agents well, and stocked your team just the way you're supposed to. On the crossing route, complete. That's Bell. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. And chalk that one up as a gain of 34 on third down. Brandon, sometimes we give a lot of these running backs credit for being good receivers and all they catch are swings and screens. <laughs> Le'Veon Bell's a full member of the passing game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. Charles, a little bit of feast or famine on this drive. They moved the ball okay, but they've been sacked twice now. And they've got to figure out how to plug that leak a little bit, right? Keep them away from the quarterback because when he's not being hit, as you mentioned, they're moving the ball well. They'll set up to throw. His throw caught right around. 
down to six. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script. However, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. As his guys are in for six, and the Steelers have taken a first quarter lead. Now that's an old fashioned death march there, partner. Took them a lot of plays, but hey, they did the job. And the defense always preaches getting off the field, making a play, and turning it back over to their own offense. Unable to do so. A long, sustained drive by the offense. Throwing here on first down. Buying time to his left. Space to maneuver at the 40. And all the way up to the 45-yard line. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones at a first down. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in. But somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. A big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. Come on, let's go! White 90! White 90! They'll look to throw here on first down. This is caught by Antonio Brown. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. And that catch puts him past the great Jerry Rice. For the most receiving yards in a single season, he's now up over 1,848. At one point, we call Jerry Rice flash. How about the dash we saw here today? The dash towards his record and passed it. What a tremendous achievement. And how much fun is it for us to be here to witness yeah, it? It's a pinch me moment for us. On first down, he'll drop to throw. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Able to get away. 
Points the tackle. He's got room to run. Open space inside the 10. And down to the 7-yard line. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Let's go! Back to throw. Stepping up. He, and he's in for six and a Steeler touchdown. It's their quarterback with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. So a quarterback scramble, certainly a pass play, but he saw something, tucked it, and got in the end zone. A lot of quarterbacks, when they scramble, they're scrambling to create more time to throw the ball downfield. In this situation, as you noted, he tucked it and took off. Try and start this drive in the air. So the left side here, and it's complete. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though. Huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. They'll go to the air here on third and two. And James has it. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. And now a timeout called for by the offense. As the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. This quarterback now 10 of 10 to start the game. How about that? As he comes up on a first and 10. Here we go. What? They'll look to throw here. And now he'll tuck it and run. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The Steelers picking up 15 yards there at a first down. A couple of first downs on the drive already. As he'll go from the 47 now on first down. Now back to throw. Flush to his right. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. Here we go. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. That escapes the sand. But in the end, the pressure too great, and he goes down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. Here we go. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. And he will go down outside of the pocket for a sack. Tried to get away but could not. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Four down, four down. Check, check. Let's go! Brian 38! Brian 38! 
Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. Throw left side, complete to Smith-Schuster. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. That catch good for five. It's third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Come on, let's go! And an alley to run! And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. A good decision in the end to pull it and run, get some nine yards and a first. Now that definitely hurts because the mindset is getting a three and out there and they don't get it done. They give up the scramble and a pickup for a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Here we go. Grand 38. Grand 38. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. This one complete right side to McDonald. A very solid gain of 27. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Here we go! Grand 38! He'll drop to throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. Here we go! White 90! White 90! Cut. Back to throw now on second and ten. And it's a fumble! The Saints say they have it and they do! So they need to determine if that knee was down before the ball was coughed up. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. And the Steelers on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and eight. Come on, let's go! They'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Something we haven't really seen much of from him. An incomplete pass. Yeah, last week. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up. But they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just... And he's taken down here by the Saints. I know there would be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and ended up getting sacked. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. Go. What? No. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Going top shelf for Smith-Schuster. And this is... Oh, my goodness. He pulled it in one-handed. 
It's a big play there for the Steelers. 52 yards. Well, it's one thing to grab it with one hand, but when you make a catch of that distance, quite another. Yes, sir. I mean, that one right there, we keep talking about the high-flying antics that we're seeing from receivers nowadays. Doesn't matter what spot they start in, but when it actually does happen in the heat of battle, brings me right out of my seat. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. Back to throw now on first down. Blitz coming and down he goes. Cameron Jordan in there to drop him for his 11th sack of the year. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game. The way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Back to throw here. Over the middle here to Brown. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Stepping up, he'll try and run. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. He certainly had plenty of success running the ball, and right now I'm getting the sense that he's looking to take off and run every time he steps back to throw it. But they did a nice job there collapsing on him and holding him to a short game. They're going to look to throw. That's complete right around the eighth. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Eli Rogers, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. A good, sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me... start the drive and able to get it here to about the 16 yard line seven yards the pickup on the pitch and catch one of the advantages of zone defense as I remember it is being able to see the play develop in front of you when the disadvantages when they find those levels where they can hit you with it sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety it makes it tough to defend they'll set up a throw steps away to his left Throw left side is complete to Rodgers. A gain of 32 that time. Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. 
The big play has him all the way out near midfield for a first and ten. They'll look to throw now on first down. Finds a seam inside the 40. James has got it. Complete. And finally brought down at the 38. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll set up to throw. Fighting through pressure. Going for the deep ball. This is caught. They give him a gain of 37. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. The three red zone trips, three touchdowns so far. They'll look for a fourth on second and goal. Back to throw again. The quick slant caught. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Only a yard on the completion. It's second and goal. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. The crowd here in the Dome making things difficult. Third and goal. Looking to throw. Dance. And the Steelers are in for the touchdown. And for them, this train, it just keeps rolling, doesn't it? Well on their way to yet another victory. Yeah, it's almost a runaway, isn't it? And you just wonder how anyone <laughs> can stop this. they got full momentum going, full confidence going. But it's not just their own confidence that is leading them. It's the lack of confidence against their opponents now. Because they see them coming and think, we've got... No Looks like he'll throw here. This is Bell on the dump off. And he showcases the spin. A pretty good game before he's taken down. An ideal down and distance to try to finish this thing off. Second and inches. the gun they'll look to throw his throw incomplete a hat tip to pj williams there defensively making sure that one didn't find its target this defense could use some more of these types of play How about him reading it, driving on the football, and he's right there for the pass breakup. Cut. They'll look to throw. And a third down pass falls incomplete.
Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one. Certainly defensively, stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them, and continue to get better at what they do. But they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you. So for the Steelers, they're now a win away from a perfect regular season as they move to 15-0. And they'll return home next week to take on the Cincinnati Bengals. Meanwhile, for the Saints, their playoff hopes take a big hit as they fall to 8-7. And, and they'll be back home next week as they're set to take on the Carolina Panthers. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.